Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian Custom Pick Gods. Jared Brandon, I'm the pickup gay. That is it. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody, it's me, Todd Novak. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs podcast. Man, oh, man, do we've got a show tonight. That's Holy a macaroni. Hell of a show. Sitting to my right. Rob J. from Mad Cow Amplification. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Rob, you are one of our um, highest rated multiple uh, episodes. Uh, people That's out right. there, they like you. Doesn't he they get the do. uh, red velvet jacket no. now? No. No. Almost. No. How, how no. many before I get the jacket? I got the You fez. get the vinyl underwear. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me know when that know happens. What, I'm going to stop right before anyway. that episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, hey, this is special. Guess who we've got on the show tonight? Go ahead, person. Hey, I'm Ryan, and, and uh, I'm from uh, Demos in the Dark. Hey! That's right. Demos in the Dark, uh, which no doubt I would Im- imagine every single person listening to this show is familiar with you, what you do on, uh, on uh, the internets. That would be something. Uh, no, it's... <laughs> I'm, I'm guaranteed. In fact, if you could just throw a couple people that you got... Over this side of the well, fence, we I wouldn't be pissed. Yeah, both of our okay. listeners know who he is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're both here. Yes. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, listen, Ryan, for those who strangely may not know who you are, uh, can you tell people where they can check you out whilst and at the same time listening to the show? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can look up uh, Demos in the Dark on YouTube. Uh, that is where I prefer to be. Um, I do have an Instagram account um, that is a necessary evil. Mm. Uh, that is also Demos in the Dark. Uh, you know what's kind of weird? I don't know why, but you kind of, for me, you're like the, the dead mouse of the guitar world. You think so? Uh, to explain that. Well, a... A lot of the stuff you both, you guys both do is sort of in darkly lit stuff. You are both yeah. very, very achieved in what you're doing. You know a great deal about the about the the things that you're talking about, and I think there's just a a, a straightforward, open, honest way that you do it. And besides making the music that Dead Mouse does, like he does a lot of content just talking about music, the music business, yeah. life in general. And it's kind of, it's kind of weird as like, cause I, I see it both and it's interesting. Well, that's, it, I, I, and, and you're okay with that is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, good. Cause no, that's I, great. I, mean, I he guys flipping, you know, well, yeah. and he's amazing. Have you, no, have, I mean, one of the, one of go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, one, you, of the, one of the, one of the, <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Do that again, Ryan. Do it here. You're up. Okay. Go. <laughs> um, one of one of the one of the one of the just negative comments that I routinely get is like, "This guy talks too much," and I yeah, I'm always kind of like, "Man." Oh no, don't worry about that. I think if I had one, I think if I Todd, I think if I had your voice, it would be. But I talk through my nose, and so I think that's the problem. Right. That's. But. Well, I'd I'd lend it to you for for a quid. Um, <laughs> anyways, well, you both can retain ownership right, right. of his voice. Yeah, just live but with you, Ryan. Somewhere. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, yes, that's uh, another story for another time. Uh, so, anyways, oh man, as you guys can tell, we're having a great time. This is also uh, Jared's last in person. Uh, rodeo with us for a little while he's still gonna be on the show don't fear don't worry your your best friend uncle jared is gonna still be on the show still gonna be on he just is unfortunately gonna be detached from us for an unknown amount of time but um and we will miss him dearly in the in the actual shop here absolutely yeah um and so anyways we've got a whopper of a show and i'm gonna guess it's gonna might go a little bit long everybody i'm just saying but that's okay because we got a, a really special guest and special guest host at, at the same time. This is co-host. Well, it's a, you're a guest right. host. No, you're, you're a guest oh. host. We're co-hosts. You're, you're co-host. a guest host. So how do I get to be a co-host then? Well, we, we can talk about that after the okay. show. All right, all right. <laughs> I mean, no, for real. That's what we are going to talk about. That I told you. There's, a, there's a hierarchy of guests here. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. So lower your seat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you are sitting. A, you are sitting a little high for our taste. Okay, that's, that's better. That's more as far like as it. Goes. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> oh man, this is fun. Okay, so we just need to thank a couple people real quick. 
Road. That's right. We need to say uh, thank you to Rode Mics for providing this awesome audio equipment from which we broadcast the Pro. The sorry. The Roadcaster, Roadcaster Pro, Pro and the Procaster mics. I yeah. was looking at one and talking about the other. That's, uh, that's true. Road outstanding Pro equipment. Procaster. Exactly. It, yeah, then the mic's over the there, The mic's Jared. over here, Jared. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Procaster mic yeah. is right there. Yeah. That's what I should just have on you my know shirt. What else? The, the articulating here, arm is as well. We love the articulating that's arm. That's right. They are. Uh, so wanted to say a big fat thank you for that. Didn't um, we call them? They're the uh, we've renamed them the road articulating arms. The road articulating arms. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, should patent that. Kind of weird. What is next, my friend? I, I don't know. know. I'm going to be pulling up something here in just a second. Mm. Pardon me. All right. We also got a, a cool letter from our executive producer, yes. John Jackson. And uh, he said, hey, one thing that uh, Jared Brandon didn't answer on his 101 was how are his P90s so freaking amazing? He says, I want to share a little story. My Les Paul special recently got rewiring and a set of Jared's pickups. This guitar has a whole new character now. Those pickups in middle position. It's like I hear every note in every chord from eight, from each pickup. Just glorious. Well done, Jared. Your, P, your P90s are pretty rad. Thank you. Let me... Well, hang, hang on. Hang on for a minute. Okay. He says, um, uh, you like a little story, do you? Uh, and you like guitars? And you like the cramps? And we've talked about that a little bit yeah. before. Uh, he says, back in 1986 in Sheffield, England, my hometown, I saw the cramps perform one of my absolute favorite shows and lifetime of concert going. Poison Ivy scowled at me from the stage dressed in gold bikini and heels with her white falcon. Oh, my. Uh, I can do it like Georgia Kite. Oh, my. So 25 years later, I'm picking up my special from my friend and amazing luthier Chris Bilton who put in Jared's P90s for me. We were chatting, and it turns out that Chris restored Poison Ivy's White Falcon. Sadly, it's not hers now, but it's the same guitar that she rocked at that concert all those years ago. Thanks, John, for sharing that little story. That's kind of yeah, cool. Like that's a little awesome. bit of rock and roll abelia there. Indeed. Jared, you were talking about your... Yes, you wanted to say something about your well, I want to answer him. Okay, answer him. Sometimes... Mike's over there. Sometimes you find the right pickups... <laughs> For the right guitar. Yeah. And that's just, when it happens, it's awesome. So, yeah. I mean. It's kismet. The, yeah. set, the set that I made, the particular set, just goes really well with that guitar. Brilliant. And it's not, I mean, that could happen with anybody's pickups. You just have to find yeah. the exact right set. <clears throat> but for, it's most likely guitar. to happen with your pickups. I guess. <laughs> right. Well, Brandon Wound, well. I, well, I, yeah. This is difficult. I, I literally just, I literally just had this conversation with Nick Greer yesterday. We were talking about pickups that we hate that work out great, dude, perfectly man. in yeah. some some guitars. They just shine, and then otherwise they sound terrible. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Uh, 57, 57 classics is you know kind of my my thought. Um, in a in a three thirty nine, they sound amazing. You put them in a Les Paul, mm. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. It's yeah, a maybe, trip. maybe Jared will have something to say about that. I'm going to try. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's it for those announcements. We need to find out what, what everybody's doing in their music world this week. Uh, gentlemen, we're going to start with Tony. Yes. We're going to kick it over to Ryan. Yes. We're going to shuffle over to Robville and wind up at the cul-de-sac of Jared Brandon, and I will finish it in the clubhouse in the tree. I don't know what that means. I've already that's lost track. Nonsense. Who's going first? I'm Tony. going first. <laughs> I, I'm going to show you how Tony it's done. Okay. This is how it goes. How does it go? So I, today, this afternoon, had the privilege mm -hmm. of trying out a couple of late 1940s Gibson, uh, a Super 400. Wow. And a Super 300, which up until a couple of weeks ago, I didn't even know that the Super 300 was an actual model. Um, hmm. So these are non-cutaway, late 40s. Um, my friend Phil Maneri has a repair shop here in town called... Uh, Hollow Body. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just, so, well, yeah. They're, they're technically F-hole acoustics, Okay, if you want to go that way. No pickups. And uh, Phil has, uh, has a shop here called uh, Fifth Avenue Fret Shop. And... Um, Pretty popular, actually. Pretty yeah. well-known, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good repair guy. And... Um, 
uh, a woman had uh, brought these over. Her husband had passed away recently. He was the original owner oh my of goodness. both of these guitars. And, you know, they, they're, they need some repairs. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And both are player-grade instruments on the Super 4. The, uh, the pick guard had deteriorated and chewed into the finish. 70 and, to 80-year-old instruments, man. Oh, my God. But, uh, and then the Super 3. So the only difference that I can tell, based on a little bit of research I did, between the Super 300 and the Super 400 is the Super 400 had gold hardware, more figured wood um, on, the, on the maple back, back and sides and neck and uh, spruce top and um was it blue spruce is blue spruce <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that's good if you know you know yes um but these guitars even in the state that they existed uh, or exist right now <clears throat> in need of some repair just sound incredible i mean that's neat they they are just yeah these are old old guitars that you know obviously they weren't just stashed under a bed uh they were played uh and they just i mean i i was just blown away by how good these things sound and even more so how different even though these guitars are probably within a year or two of each other um and you know just by you know the different wood whoever was carving the the uh, bracing underneath or whatever i actually like this the super 300 more it's a little more vibrant it's brighter than the super 400 and um i mean i, th I think it's good these are both going to be very cool projects when phil's done with them uh but uh but yeah that was something i'd seldom if ever get to do that's awesome yeah now the 40s gibson so there's world war ii mm -hmm. uh i believe that there was a period where there were more of a, a woman a, a women workforce there yes well probably I think there was a book written by uh it's well Carter. documented yeah the women yeah. of kalamazoo i think well, maybe it's... those guitars are from that era well i mean these it would be shortly after the war mm -hmm. and you know approaching the 50s so yeah i mean i, I would say that you know, it, it, there's a possibility of that, and, yeah. and and Gibson, I think, you know, retained a lot of of, of women in their workforce too for certain uh, interesting things. But fascinating story, Tony. Yes, thank you for sharing, Ryan. What's going on in your music world this week? Um, you know, I am always kind of working ahead, um, but uh, released a demo this morning of the brand new Thorpe Pulse Doppler, which is uh, the Dan. Coggins. Dan Coggins is actually on staff at, at Thorpe, and so this is kind of a reboot of the Doppelganger. Very mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. pedal. Um, <clears throat> got a couple of amps here from Fender that I'm currently working on a, a shootout for that was uh, that was requested. And then um, I have another project that I've been working on on the side. Uh, where Milkman makes an amp that um, will self-bias between 66, 6L6, and 5881. And so I, I don't know if that's a maybe all I, I, maybe a lot of amps do that. I don't know. But um, I saw it as a really good opportunity to um, to do a comparison between those three different um, those three different power tubes and see how they sound. And I've just been kind of doing the, you know, the playing ahead of time and seeing what the difference is. And I'm honestly shocked at how different the, the 5881 and the 6L6 are a little bit closer, but um, I it's amazing how how different uh, power tubes can be in the way an amp sounds. You know, I'm used to doing things like you know switching preamp tubes and stuff like that to attempt to get a different kind of sound, or you know doing something drastic like changing a speaker. But um, power tube, I I'd kind of written off power tubes as being a thing that like really mattered a ton, and it turns out um, they do. <laughs> um, so, <Yep>. yeah. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I, that, that, it, the, one of the really great things about, you know, doing this kind of job is like, I'm constantly learning stuff all the time. And, um, so that's, Isn't that's great. great. And <clears throat> yeah, um, I never, I, you know, I, I never will release a video where, you know, like I have all the answers. It's like, oh, that's a great question. Mm. Um, and then um, I got a, a kind of a care package from Jam Pedals. They just sent me a box full of pedals, and uh, I'm trying to work my way through those. And they all sound 
just absolutely stunning. Dude, the delay line. Great guys, is man. So good. Yeah. It yeah, just really sounds good. fantastic. And it's so yeah. simple. Um, Rob, I think yep. you were, you had a, did you have any response to the power tube thing, Bob? Nope. They do make a lot of difference, but there's, there's so many variables in there as well. It's, uh, uh for instance, uh, one brand six V six versus another one. So if you're comparing a, a JJ six V six to a tongue soul six L six, it's mm-hmm. kind of apples and oranges there too. Cause the construction of the tube is so vastly different. Um, yep. impedance of the transformer, no matter how you design an amp, the, the, the output section is going to, how can I put this? Um, be more accurately designed for one tube versus the others. So even if it works with all different types of tubes, it's going to be most ideal with one particular pair. Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of moving, moving, uh, variables yeah. in there, you know, it's, it, it's, yeah. So this part, this partic- this particular amp actually has a, a switch on it mm-hmm. where if you're running a six V six, you can flip over to the six V six switch. And then if you That's run really six L cool. sixes, yeah. you can flip yeah. over um, to that. And I did, uh, I asked Tim uh, Marcus over at Milkman and, you know, I told him I was going to do this and um, I asked him for recommendations and he, on what tubes to purchase. Mm-hmm. And he, he said, just, you know, go straight. JJ on it. JJ. Yeah. Me links. Yeah. That's the great way to do it. Cause that way, at least you're looking apples to apples as far as not, you know, going from one brand to another, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Awesome. Now what, what would happen if you put a six L six in, but set it over to the six V six setting? Is there, are there any I, warnings against doing such things? It, it well, would work for probably about five minutes. Cause the bias voltage would be so, so low in comparison to what six L six wants. Hmm. You'd watch the six v six slowly light up, bright red, and then poof. Oh, I love when they do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Smells awesome. So, but 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 Ryan, at the end of your demo, you should try that just to see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you won't I mean, be in the dark anymore when you do that. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, that's. <laughs> I'm all, I'm all for a gimmick. <laughs> That's there we go. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here, Rob. How about yourself? What's going on this week? Um, nothing. Uh, let me think. I've you, got okay. We've been doing so. You, you're just now thinking of what? Yeah, oh, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I got to um, give you the, the book. So um, no, uh, I really only think of my music. Uh, my music the week is uh, I've got a gig coming up this weekend. All so, right, wow. gigging that's again. So, that's yeah. so good. yeah, you're a hell of a guitar player. So, uh, that's like, true. Mediocrity at its best. Uh, that's no, that's yeah. for. Nah, he's good. Um, so yeah, so it's I'm. It's a mixture of excited, a little nervous because mm-hmm. this band hasn't played forever. It will be fine. We'll, I mean, it's like putting on an old shoe with this band. But um, but then also it's like crap. I got to pack up all my gear, mm. put it in the car, unload it at the gig. It's like oh, and I got to restring before I, you know. Yeah. It's a lot make of a work. Checklist. It makes sure every little damn thing is oh, in there. It's just it's just the work. It's like man, the one thing you forget. I love that part. That. You love that's exciting. The checklist. Well, I tell you what, you can come over, pack up my gear for me, right? Because I just want to do the playing part, right? Yeah, so, I, I like it all. Yeah. So, uh, Jared, how about yourself? Oh, yeah. So I have to play real life what I rather uh, because I am going to move to Nashville. I'm going to temporarily stay uh, at a friend's place. They have a downstairs living area, like a mother in law suite or whatever. So I won't have a lot of room, maybe. You know, six to seven hundred square feet. That's not a lot for big giant Jared. <laughs> Will you have to wear a dress if you're going to be a mother-in-law? Well, yeah. I, 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 I do it. I don't care. Are, are so, you deciding which marshals to bring? Is that what's yeah. going on? Here? Which marshals? <laughs> Little do they know. Marshals. What group of marshals <laughs> should I? They, they have I no idea who's going to be moving in. I know. If you go down in my basement at my house, it's just a guitar and amp fun house. Yeah. So it's yeah. like totally. But I'm pretty darn certain I'm going to take one amp, and that's going to be my Fop Star. So, Drew, you win, buddy. Right on. That's a good move, especially for that that place that you're Drew Foppy about. makes a, a hell of a great amplifier. He's he's a, a great, great amp guy. He's also, we all know who Drew is. Man. Yeah, he's who been on the show kidding? several times. Several times. So, taking his amp, and I think I'm going to take a couple of electrics. And, and, uh, and the Fez. And the Fez, of course, and some pedals and whatever. Cool, and man. Probably an acoustic, and that's... And an ox. I have to... Do no, no. <laughs> you don't have to with the Los Dos, my friend. Yeah. You can turn that down, and they won't hear it upstairs. Yeah. 
So they don't have any carpet either, I don't think. So I'm going to hear where they're stepping at all times. That's going to be great. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got it's like living in an apartment again. Yeah, it is, but it's temporary because you well, know, and it's worse for you because your head is that much closer to the I know that's true. Underneath that's the true. Ceiling. I think it's going to be great. They're great people. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So that that's what's awesome. going on with me. I got to decide. That's what to the take. best thing. What ever. about you? Well, old chum? I got to do something super duper fun. I had a coworker say that she um, wants uh, her husband plays guitar a little bit, and, um, and he's kind of had the same r- little. It's like I say rig going? with quotes um for a, for a long time and she said i really like to get him something special I'm like i can ha- absolutely help with that but what's your price range and she told me i said that's respectable and i understand you know where it's at and uh, so it was uh a thousand dollars you can get a lot for that you absolutely okay. can in fact um what i landed on based on his musical tastes and what he's kind of looking to do I picked out. It was like shopping for myself. It was really neat. I was like, ooh. Uh, I got, I picked out a. Uh, you just don't get to keep it at your house. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I, for a little while, I will, but I do have to give it back. <laughs> that's not um, good. That's not going to get old anytime yeah. soon. So uh, I have picked out a Squire Starcaster. Oh, yeah. That's a good the one. The burst which, version of that. Which one? With the uh, wide range humbuckers or the. The standard humbuckers. Um, I believe these have the wide range. Yeah, that's. Uh, okay. I'll have to double check. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I got that. Any and uh, and then a, a Supro Delta King 12, hmm. which is um, a, a new line of their smaller wattage amps, mm-hmm. and uh, they've got a Delta King 8, 10, and 12. Mm-hmm. I think the 10 is a five watt amp. I believe this is 15. Um, might be a 10. Anyways, um, I got it. It's right in front of me. Why don't I just check? Anyways, it's a really killer deal, and it's a cool looking amp. You know, it's 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 got they they put some some stuff into the style of the amp as well, and it's uh, six forty nine at uh, Sweetwater hmm. uh, for a uh, it's um, a fifteen watt tube combo, and um, yeah, it's got all kinds of stuff. It's got spring reverb, line out, fat mode, boost, the uh, you know all the all the all the good stuff, and for a you know a small area. Mm-hmm non gigging situation this is it's a from what i can tell you from everything probably, i've heard it's a great sounding you amp you could probably gig with it too you probably could uh and you know i said well if you're gonna do this you know you want to get all the rig she goes yep just make it a whole package get the strap get the get the stand get the cord get the the whole nine yards so it was really the, cool and the bit of honey the bit of honey. Oh, yeah. If, it, if it's coming from Sweetwater, are you going to pass I love it. it. I, love lot. The, I love bit of honey. I love the little I, candy pack that they send in every I feel, order. I feel, like, I feel like Sweetwater is like like wholly keeping the company bit of honey alive. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, if they didn't, I would because I love that stuff. Uh, anyways, it's a really good deal. And so check this out. That amp is, like I said, that's $649, okay? The, um, the Starcaster is... Three ninety nine. I mean, that's a killer deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is an outstanding deal for that guitar, and it is the wide range, Jared or uh, Tony. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there you go. If you want a pretty flipping great budget guitar with that isn't crap, um, and this thing's gotten great reviews ever mm-hmm. all up and down the street. So Ryan, did you play? Have you played that? I haven't. Uh... I um I haven't played that particular one, but I right now the the Squire series is nothing to spit at. No, uh, not at all. Just just in general. I I, I, I was thinking friend. about one of the paranormals, but I landed on this one. Yeah, yep. I I have I have a friend who um you know plays with like Bon Iver and Andrew Bird and all the you know he's a he's a he's a pro he's a pro player, and um he, he to this day uh, is still rocking a a, a Squire J Mascus jazz master and like yep that was in the running by the way for this yeah, for this that's, selection that's that's a that is one of their great models I just mean, sent them some pickups yes didn't you who jay mascus, jay mascus yes yeah. that's Sweet. right well anyway so that was what i got to do and that was super fun and i get to shop vicariously through someone else which i love doing it's always yeah. fun spending I someone else's money, money. That's yeah. I, I really can't that's not a bad stuff. week <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, we are going to transition into some awesomeness hey, real quick. So, Todd, you got the guitar. Yes. You got the amp. I did. 
Uh, let's just assume that he's got some pedals uh-huh. and we're going to need some cabling. What did you recommend? He, he's going to ne- need those tour gear designs patch cables. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love those. My favorite. I have them too. Oh, Rectamundo. Those are outstanding cables. And if you have a bunch of pedals laying around and with all kinds of random patch cables that you've gotten over the years and everything, you need to clean your act up. You need, and you want to feel good about what you're looking at and know that they work and not guess that they work. Right. Mm. These work. They're outstanding they and they're fit super, everywhere. super affordable. Fit everywhere on the pedal. And as we were talking before the show, we really don't recommend anything that we absolutely don't believe in or, or at least uh, the majority of us really like. <laughs> and we both like yeah. and believe in this uh, I product. I honestly have a bunch of those. So. Yes. So go to tourgeardesigns.com forward slash discount forward slash the guitar knobs and you're going to get 10% off your entire order. That's Sold! Right. That's All right. of the patch cables you get because you're more than likely going to get one. Let's just be honest. Yeah. So make sure you go over and do that. And we want to thank Tour Gear Designs for sponsoring our four on the floor segment. Jared? How about you give me a little yes? One, two, one, two, three. Four on the floor. Ryan, you ready to go, buddy? Oh yeah. Goodness. So this is the uh, this is the four the four must have without. pedals. That's right. <laughs> you know, this is. I, I know everybody has a hard time with this, and I'm not the only one. But yeah. uh, I, I I I've thought about it all week. Okay. Um and uh, Paul Cochran, Timmy. Okay. Uh, v V three, if possible. Um, Why the V three? Uh, because it's the newest one. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, it's That's it's fair. Out, out of uh, the the honestly it, it, the knobs go the right way on them, um, and I don't have to think about it. Perfect, because you know you know how on the other ones they go backwards. That mm-hmm. is weird. Oh yeah, the tr- yeah. the tr- yeah. That's like on uh, a box. It doesn't make yeah, any the sense. Treble, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a cut control. That's why. A uh, a brute fuzz from Spiral Electric. Ooh. Um, is uh, is one of my all time, all time favorite fuzz pedals. Um, I uh, an Alexander pedals quadrant delay mm. is one that I use uh, quite a bit, and uh, this it might seem like kind of a cheap shot, but um, an even tight H nine is I just can't imagine living life without it. Yep, uh, that has been on the show many many times, so that is not a cop out or a reach or whatever you just called it that I forgot. Yeah, I forget. Too. <laughs> uh, yeah, the H9 is uh, that's a pretty amazing machine. So why shouldn't it, it be on there? I'm holding right. out for the H10. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> All right. Well, that was an that's a mighty fast and mighty good four on the floor. And look, I mean, you demo dem, uh, you demo loads of pedals. So for you to call those four out, I think that's saying something. Yeah, you know, well, so I demo loads of pedals, right? But um, I, I also gig, and and my my personal board has not changed in a long time um, because it, you know it's set up in a way that I that uh, that I you know I know what to expect, and I can think more about playing and less about what I'm stomping on. Mm-hmm. And it's weird for a guy who, who demos lots of pedals. Um, you know, when it comes to live settings, like I am all about not having to think about a pedal board in front of me. Yeah. Um, yep. And, and you know, I'm not, I'm oddly not a big, you know, a big stomper. Um, when it comes to gigs, I'm, you know, like, yeah, you know, I keep it pretty simple. I got some drive and some fuzz and some delay and, you know, like that's kind of, it's kind of it. It's all. It's all I have the bandwidth for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I do admire the people who have like the massive, you know, edge, you know, size, uh, <laughs> you know, pedal boards, and actually use all everything on it in the midst of a ninety-minute set. Like I'm like, man, that's amazing. Yeah. Because um, I just don't have, I don't. You know, it's like walking and chewing gum at the same time. Like I, you know, it's just, I, I, it's tough. Do you have big tough feet? for a guy like me? <laughs> um, I don't have big That's feet. That's a personal have, question, Todd. Well, I, I, I have big feet, and it's and they're not as big as Jared's, but the reason I'm asking is because, like, that tap dance becomes that much more um, precarious, you know, if you've got uh, elongated... Well, watch so, it. Is, is, 
so this this is what happens to me and so like you know like you got you got a change coming up in a song like let's say you're getting ready to gear up and you to to the do a bridge right mm-hmm. and you use a special set of effects for that particular bridge to make it really pop mm-hmm. and what what about halfway through that second chorus i'm thinking about what i gotta do i gotta get to, over there yeah to get you know all everything set up for that bridge part and at that point i'm not thinking about playing that chorus <laughs> so uh, i typically what will happen is like that's where i screw up all the time is when i'm you know trying to plan my next move for my next pedal switch and stuff like that and it's just kind of like man you know what let's just let's just play because that's all I that's all I can do, and it, so I'm not I'm not one of those super coordinated uh, guitar players that can you know could do everything at once. I'm just you know. If the pedal so, board only had Siri on it, Siri, right? Play, right. Hit the bridge pedal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I keep it pretty simple, um, but uh, and I find that those those part you know and the, like the Timmy you know, you know I've played a Timmy forever you know and so it's just about creature comfort you yeah. know like. Um, well, you you identified your sound. I think that's a hard thing to to actually do, and I think a lot of people struggle with that. Um, really getting a an actual sound that they can have because you know we're always searching for tone and trying to hone that, and maybe be experimenting and stuff. But uh, you know we can we know if we hear uh, a particular pass, you know any kind of sound from a song we like, we know who did it. Yeah, because of that, and so to be able to actually get something that you feel you believe to be, this is my signature sound. This is like what I. Sh- this is what I sound like. It's pretty special. And if you got that, why are you gonna mess it up? Yeah, you know, I mean, and the the you know the I started with a Timmy V one. It was one of those where it was like, this is what I can afford. You know, like I can afford. You know. I was probably in college and it was like, I can afford this pedal right now. And then I'm not going to be able to afford another overdrive pedal for a while. So, you know, like you just make it work and in the process of making it work that then it becomes your thing. So I, you know, I, I often, and it's, I often wonder about options paralysis when it comes to, um, you know, the, the just array of pedals that we have out there and whether that's necessarily a good thing or not. Because, you know, like when you go back to, you know, we were talking about Jay Maskus earlier, like, you know, why does Jay Maskus play uh, a jazz master? He wanted a strat, but he couldn't afford one and jazz masters were cheap. So he got one and he turned that into, you know, and the, I believe Ellis Costello has the same story. Wanted a strat. Strats were too expensive. Jazz masters were cheap. Bought one. Mm. And then and then ground it out and made it work for him. Jay Mascus ground out that jazz master and made it work for him. And that became his signature, mm-hmm. you know, part of his signature sound. And I do wonder about, you know, it's like when, you know, you have, you know, if you go, man, I, w- I want an overdrive pedal and you Google overdrive pedals, like you have an unbelievable, and you know, um, amount of choices. And, you know, it's like, I, I always kind of recommend to people like, just get one, and just play it for a year and um, and get to know it and get to know it inside and out. And chances are, whatever it is will end up being your thing. If it's really drastically not your thing, then that's, you know, that's one thing. But um, you in, in in my head, I just saw the Ray Liotta Goodfellas meme when he said, <laughs> <laughs> just get one and play it for a year. And he's all, yeah. and he's like, <laughs> You know, yeah, do it. yeah, no, and, yeah. And, yeah, no, Point no one has, yeah. no one has ever taken me up on that. Yeah. Not a single person. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I say that, and I'm automatically discredited uh, as a human being. Right. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean that's, and it's kind of the case with a lot of this stuff where it's just like you know, like this was, this is what I had, and it, you know, and so I, so I used what it. What guitar were you playing? Well, uh, in general. Yeah, like, like what's your go-to that, that you play in your band? Yeah. Oh, right now, um, you know, I'm a I'm a Strat guy, um, and um, <laughs> I am using a Syfe OH19, which is a, a Strat style guitar. Um, really, one of the one of the better guitars I've ever put my hands on, and um, it's just a joy to play. Um, and that's you know, I'm also yeah, I'm I'm a one guitar per gig guy you know like 
I play with guys who have guitar techs who, you know, switch their guitars every other song and stuff like that. And I just like that's just again kind of along with the pedal boy thing. And it's like, man, just I'll just play this one guitar and I'll mm. make it work for the set, you know. And that's um, where you and I stand across each to the, the street and look at each other and say, "Welp, thanks, anyways." <laughs> Are you a, you're a multi you're a uh, well, multi multi it, guitar guy? It's not it's not uh, like it's not like a Rick Nielsen syndrome kind of thing where I've got like yeah. a rack of them just because that's what I've done for entertainment or not. I'm not saying that, you know, I, I play the ones that I, that I created the song on. Sure. Because that's what I just got really familiar with. Like the, the, the little actions and the muscle memory things where you're like, yeah, no, it feels like this on this guitar. And if I try to play those songs on other guitars, it just doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't, I don't feel like I'm playing it right. Uh, yeah. No, that's I just mean, me. That's it, just me. Yeah, no, there is there is some uh I you know, I kind of t- I I take I take kind of the the Bono approach um where you know, he said U2 was two bands. You know, there was the there was the record band and then there's the live band. Hmm. Um and so yeah, I mean there's abs- you know, with a lot of these groups there are absolutely parts that I recorded with the Les Paul on the record. And you know now I'm playing it live on a strap, but I'm just kind of like deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like just like, you know, I'm not getting paid enough. Yeah, to, I'm not you know. good enough to be able to shift those songs over to the other song. I mean, if I'm, <laughs> that's really what it is. So I'll just admit that. Uh, well, holy mackerel, we really could be talking for another ten hours, um, and and I I would welcome that any other day of the week. Um, I think we need to share. A little bit about who you are, what you do, why you do it, and how you got to do it. Um, and we don't have to. Uh, we're, we're happy to, to go into tons of tangents, but I do want to mm-hmm. give people that maybe aren't familiar with you or are super familiar, but like, how, how did this guy? How how what? Who? Huh? Yeah. How did you come about and all that good stuff? Yeah. So my day gig um, is I work for a firm called Mass Distro. And we are, um, we're a boutique pedal distributor. And when we started, it was just myself and a, and a friend. And uh, we're now, we just opened an office in Dublin and we're now this, you know, large international. That's I have an assistant awesome. now. Hmm. I have an assistant. Wow. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but, um, but when we started, it was just the two of us. And we, you know, one day we were like, well, maybe we should provide some media stuff for the people who we do distribution for. And, um, and Sarah and I, you know, Sarah and I kind of drew straws on it. And, and I, I pulled the straw essentially the well, the shortest. And, um, and so I started, you know, and, and I went into it with this attitude that I think a lot of, I think it's an attitude that a lot of people have, um, just based on some of the uh, uh, awful comments that I receive sometimes. Um, I I looked at it and I looked at someone like Andy Martin, who I you know adore, and I was like, I was like, man, that guy's got the easiest job in the world. I can't wait to <laughs> can't wait to start <laughs> cashing in on this sucker. And yeah. um, and and I learned I learned it was really hard. It's it's a really hard thing to do, and my first um, my first I don't know probably fifty videos were just awful, like and, just and, and then you picked up a pick and it was everything was fine. Yeah, yeah, everything changed. <laughs> um, um, and and part of part of what I didn't know how to do was I didn't know how to work a camera, and so I was uh, this is in our old house and um, and I had a very low lit studio and i would just set up this camera and press record without even looking at i didn't know what buttons to turn anyways i was almost afraid to touch any of the knobs or buttons and the end result was this very dark <laughs> like really really the initial videos were like you like you were barely seeing a silhouette of me mm-hmm. um and um then that just kind of became became a thing and i would all you know I, I started doing it on the mass distro uh youtube channel and um then at some point as we grew and grew and grew um we did pull in a media person and that media person essentially had a different plan and he was like you know what you let's get you off of the mass distro channel 
and get you doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'll handle everything else. Like, don't worry about it. Um, so I did. And when I, when I did it, um, uh, it was, it was a pretty astonishing to me how quickly my schedule filled up. Um, uh, and it um, has stayed that way. I, you know, I'm, I'm booked a couple months out kind of all the time. Mm. And um, just doing and these it, demos. Yep. Just doing these demos. And it, you know, it, and it's not, it's not just pedals anymore. You know, now we're, you know, getting into guitars, doing, you know, doing a lot of really great guitars for, for, for boutique makers. Um, but also some of the, some of the larger companies, like I'm, I'm pretty regular with Fender and that's cool. You know, like the, um, and you know, I mean, and a year and a half ago, two years ago, I wasn't even doing this, mm. you know? And it's like, so I, I have been, uh, extremely fortunate. Um, like, cause you know, I do talk to other content creators who, you know, are having to do the hustle to try to get, you know, the cold calls to pedal manufacturers and guitar makers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And just really trying to drum up content. And, uh, for whatever reason, I, I haven't had to do that. And it's been really, I mean, I, I just feel really, really lucky in that regard. Um, I don't, and I still don't know what I'm doing right or wrong. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's interesting that you don't know that because I mean, to me, it seems kind of obvious, which, um, I guess in my job and my day job, these are things that I have to pay attention to. It's sort of like you look, you put up pictures of whatever, all of the people in the universe that your brand or business lives in. And you kind of, you kind of try to find where the hole is. Right. And it's like, what, what is everybody doing? What is not, what are what are people not doing? Maybe there's a why associated but with that. We did the same thing with with this show. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, there's a hole right there, and I know that we can do a good job of of filling that. And for you, I, I would venture to guess that at, at the time, everything everybody was going full on like TV, like uh, um, like soundstage, like sets. You know, yeah. it's like everybody was like following the lead of um, that pedal show uh -huh. and and a couple other fantastic shows where it's like higher end productions. Everybody's like, well, the only way I'm going to survive is if I get higher end production or I got to get Christmas lights or I got to get, you know, this or that and the other thing because there are people that, that do spark and, and like really take off and you're, you, part of your brain's like, it's going to be dumb if I attempt to do this and not follow the lead of something that's very successful by accident you did the opposite of that and yeah that caught people's attention that caught my attention i was like whoa what's this right it on top of that your approach is different and that's where i won't mention the dead mouse thing i, I yeah I, I feel like it's different i don't feel like i'm watching a show okay i that's feel like i'm kind of sitting there with you a little bit oh that's cool you sit sitting there in the dark yeah um yeah <laughs> it's you very know, creepy um you know, I went through a whole bunch of different stages in it too, where, you know, I was watching other people, um, you know, I was watching knobs and I was watching, you know, and I tried, I tried all of that stuff, mm -hmm. um, and failed miserably. And it was like at one, at some certain point I went, you know what, I'm just going to do this the way I would want to experience it. Yeah. Um, and you know what, some people, some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, you know, like I, uh, I am like universally hated by the the doom police and the <laughs> ambient police like those two groups just did, it, they they share two things they both enjoy really long single notes and they hate me like mm. that's the that's the only and they pro they probably all smoke a lot of weed that's the only those are the only intersections that they have but well, um let's explore that for a second why do you think that is uh well because uh so uh, about a year and a half ago, I did uh, I did a pedal. Um, it was the the Pharaoh from um, Black Arts Toneworks, which oh, is yeah. d decidedly a Doom pedal. It's marketed as a Doom pedal. Right. I I have discovered that that pedal is useful for a lot of other things, um, and that it's a really great fuzz pedal. To, you know, if you were going to own one fuzz pedal to kind of cover all your bases, that would be a good option. 
And um, and I, and that was the case that I, it was a very positive video. I made this case in this video. Mm-hmm. And um, so on YouTube, there are there are comments that will go straight to hell, essentially. <laughs> like 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 YouTube like YouTube will read it ahead of time, and its algor- its algorithm will go, oh. yeah, he does he doesn't want to see these. Um, and for for like months, for months after that video, um, the Doom dudes were just like, they all their comments were so vile that they went just straight into this this bin. Wow. Um, yeah, it was it was, re- it was really terrible. And then. Uh, um, and so I, yeah, at that point, I was like, okay, fair enough. Um, and then um, the uh, hologram sent me a microcosm, and I thought they, I thought they screwed up. Um, and so I, you know, kind of was going to do it to call their bluff. And so what I did is I did a non-ambient demo of <laughs> their pedal. <laughs> and oh, um, holy crap, dude! The ambient police, like people are like, you're doing that wrong. I'm like, how do you do it wrong? Right. Yeah. Like how how am I doing this wrong? And yeah, you know, and I really went into you know most of the time I ignore um, I ignore those things, but you know, I decided to go down the rabbit hole with one guy who was you know who was real adamant about me ruining this pedal for the world, and um, and I was like, what am I doing wrong? And he was like, you're doing too much. And I'm like, you mean like I, I created a melody, and then, and then, and then built on that melody, and then supported that that melody with a rhythm section, and he was essentially like, yeah, that that's not art, and I was like, got it, okay, got it, yeah, um, and so and so it seems whenever I whenever I stick a toe in either of their worlds. And try to do whatever it is that I do. Um, though both of those worlds will very quickly clap back, and um, it's it's always very interesting. Um, now you so. would you would think that the people that are into like the ambient stuff would be pretty laid back, pretty chill, right, and yeah. pretty like but accepting not. of they're, they're right, right. <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> fiercely defensive of their genre. I mean, yeah. the same thing yeah, with Doom no, too, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Zoom, yeah, exactly. You're like, well, the Doom dudes, you're like, man, you like the like, like you just assume that they're so stoned and playing video games that they, they just you know like, uh, it, but like, yeah. And the the ambient folks, you just kind of assume that they're sitting around with scented candles and stuff like that, and just like at whatever level of peace you can get yeah. to, and like you know they've reached it. Um, and uh, but no, I p- I piss them off every time. Uh, well, I think it's so. that's weird because one of the things that I I do enjoy about the show is that you. I I feel like you hit appropriate types of music for in, in order to demonstrate what the pedal can do. Yeah, you know, and that was that was something that I took from from Andy. Um, you know, like An- Andy Martin is a chameleon, and I can't be I can't be as uh, I'm just not built to be as diverse as him. But uh, that's one of the things that uh, Andy is Andy is my absolute favorite, and mm. like when I watch. When I've watched him, I mean, I grew up watching him, and you know, like, but one of the things about him is like he is he is a chameleon, and he can play, you know, he will play whatever is right for mm-hmm. whatever he is focusing on, and um, and I try to I try to cop that a little bit, um, but like I said, he's he's got he's got a much wider palette than I do, but well, I appreciate that. Yeah, well, you know, you talked about how hard it is for you to do this, and I think on the outset people were like how hard is it to you're a guitar player you like gear how hard is it to play guitar because you look with the gear that you like but you are having to come up with like i dipped my just pinky toe into uh doing i said look i'm not gonna try to do anything anybody else is doing because i can't and i started doing like a one minute and i just called it a one minute wonder because that's all that you're gonna get out of me (laughs) but the thing is i just want to say like Here's a quick glance of what this pedal does, right? Yep. Just like n- nothing super elaborate, but you have to come up with something that fits the piece of gear that you're playing. I th- in the spirit of that, not because you're going to not, you know, piss somebody off or something. You just have to like what is this but what is this pedal giving me back? What is this amp or this guitar giving me back? And yeah. that 
just coming up with like what is the thing I'm going to play on this, man, that is a time suck. Holy mackerel. Yeah. So, I think it and part of what makes it really hard is I think about it from three different levels. And one is like there are three different people that I that I have to do right by. Um or three different groups. And and one of those is the manufacturer themselves. Um, because they're paying me to do a thing. Mm-hmm. And so I I better get that right. So that that's a stress. Um and then you I also want to make sure that I'm giving the most accurate as I can um, you know, description or you know sh- illustration of what the product is for people who are interested in possibly purchasing it. it would be a total bummer to get something that had been messed with and you know it, you know it, it studio wise whatever that doesn't yeah, sound so anything doctored. like you know yeah yeah so like I want to make sure and I want to make sure that I'm a, kind of explaining what it is for people who are interested in, in purchasing it um, as well. And so like those two things, because it becomes less about, and this is, and this is the thing, the thing I see a lot of demo people who are kind of coming up struggle with um, is it's nothing like, it doesn't have, none of this has anything to do with me. Um, I look at it's, it's a hundred percent. It's 99.9% about the product. And it, so if you're on a road trip and you um, you get thirsty, you go to you stop at a gas station and you you know you want a soda and then you go stand in front of this soda aisle and then you have all of these choices and you find the one that best suits you, the soda that is going to quench your thirst or whatever. That's the same thing that people are doing when they, you know, prefer one demo so I'm one content creator over another what what they're doing the thing that brought them there the content creator didn't make them thirsty it's the product you know the product is and so when people go to a to a gear demo channel it's be, it's because the product brought them there but they can resonate with that particular mm. content creator and so that is the content creator that they have chosen to hit the subscribe button to and you know and check out um and and you know and the the thing that you run into with with a lot of um and it's a it's a it's a hard thing to kind of get over and i had to get over it myself too because i did think that i for a long time i thought you know it was me that was doing this stuff and um and and then i the realization came to it's like no you know what like my focus needs to be on presenting product because that is the thing that that's the reason we're here and that's the reason i have any subscribers if i put out a record tomorrow and pushed it on my youtube subscribers or you know internet followers nobody would care because it has it's it's all about the product and um and so that's it's it's a it's a lot different than I'm. I want to write a song that's going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like, I, I need to do right by these different, these different groups and this different, you know, criteria that needs to be met for this to be a success. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird world. Well, Um, I can very much say that um, I would love to sit down and uh, just speak in metaphors for hours with you. Cause I like, I, that's how I, (laughs) That's how I talk and think to where Tony and Jared are just like, what are you talking about, dude? But I'm like, no, hang on. I'm getting there. It's going to come around. I love that. But I, I prefer mixed metaphors. Yes. <laughs> um, so here's, here's something I will throw in there that w- you hit on something that I think actually is one of the things that make your demo, I think, successful, which is you are at, at the same time that you're taking it out of you're, you're taking yourself out of it it's the dark part right it, it's not like <laughs> i mean honestly it it's it may be accidental but that is what you're doing you're saying hey this isn't about me this is about the thing but the difference is you're still you are still very present mm-hmm. and you're making a connection with the gear and the the viewer mm-hmm. but without the big giant spotlight on you. And I think that that is, Literally. I mean, honestly, I, I really do think that that is a, kind of the magic of what you're able to do. 
Yeah, and you know, I, I think some of that comes from um, like comes from years of being a hired gun, um, you know, as a player. Um, and I, I, you know, you there's a front man, and I'm not him, and um, and I try to pull you know pull back as 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 best as I can. I I actually the um, one of the the lighting guy at First Avenue in Minneapolis, he. Um, he now knows when I'm coming um, because I, I got I got yelled at for trying to uh, push some lights out of the area where I was. I had the big pole up and everything like that, and that dude was not happy with me. So now he knows whenever I come that there's got to be a spot on stage that's going to be dark, and that's where I'm going to stand because I, you know, like I. I want the focus needs to be the, on the person who's singing, the person who wrote the song, the person who mm-hmm. you know whatever. That's that's the focus. Like, let me just sit back here and play support. And it, it, to a certain degree, I feel like I'm doing the same thing with the product. Let me just be the support for the product, mm-hmm. and let's let the product take center stage because that's that's the focus here. Yeah. What a great venue, first half. Jared, you got a question. I absolutely do. Can you tell us about the hat that you wear? Oh, yes. Yes, I get that's a that's a question I get a lot. So it's a company uh, in San Francisco and they called uh, Waltz Caps Um, and they make like welders caps. It's a bicycle cap. It's a bicycle. It kind of looks like a welders cap a little bit. Well, so here's the thing. I have a super small head. So um, like unusually small. I don't know. Not like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Let's I mean, get a circumference. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's. Uh, I have a hard time buying hats, and because I have a, I have a small head, and so what I've found is actually when I put on this this cycling cap, um, it it takes on a different form on my head than it would on someone else's head, where it would probably look more like a, a cycling cap. Mm, I wear size eight. Do you know your hat size? It's it's eight, yeah. Well, I was in the yeah, military. He's six, seven. Oh, okay. I was going to ask yeah. how you knew that. So. I mean, in the military, it's, it's all fitted. Right, right. Oh, right. sure, sure. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I, either that or, I mean, especially, I, you, you're the one going to Nashville, right? You're going to have to yeah. get, you're going to have to get yourself a, like, a real cowboy hat. Yeah. T- yeah. Ten gallon? I'll wear it. Like, just, like, a, like a real, like, everybody should have a real fitted cowboy hat. Like, everybody it. should own one, but you should definitely have one. Um, if you're going to be living in Nashville. I will take your advice. Uh, I'll do it. I think Jared is the only guy in the army who ever had actually bespoke <laughs> uniforms made. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, we'll take two of these yeah. and mix them up. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, um, Ryan, can you tell us at all about like maybe what your, this, this, uh, what you have going this journey that you've been on in this awesome, you know, outpouring content that you've that you've managed to to wrangle what is what does this look like moving forward to you no clue um and that's that's the so i started out 2021 by going and i said this verbally um yeah i spoke it into existence um (laughs) Mm -hmm. um i wanted to move demos in the dark to being a, a more holistic guitar channel um and so that was uh that was when i started to talk with some of my friends who are guitar builders and amp builders and stuff like that because it is it's it's a whole package that makes a sound it's not just you know a pedal here and there um so i i'm really enjoying that um i really enjoy working on guitars because that's you know that's the point where you're you you have a physical connection so that that's really fun um and i've been enjoying that but you know i after that essentially what it, my plan is is i'm just going to keep doing it until people stop watching and um you know if if that when that happens um then or i stop having fun like it, one of those two things like i stop having fun or people stop mm. having fun watching me i hope and, that's not anytime soon because you r- really do put out fantastic stuff man oh thanks I, I appreciate that man um but yeah that's 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 my plan i'm just gonna you know just keep rolling with the industry as it moves along and um if the industry still has a place for me in a couple of years hopefully i'll still be doing it and if not i'll be doing something else Awesome. Hey, I think uh, Rob's got a question for you. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan, uh, do you have a go-to amp that you use for your demos? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
<clears throat> good question. That is a good question. Um, you know, it it de- it depends. I do have I do have the one that I'm most comfortable with. I am most comfortable with a uh, Benson Amps um, oh. uh, Monarch Reverb. Um, that is, it's just it's the amp that I use all the time, anyways. Um, so um, that's your gigging re- amp. Yeah, and it's really good for like it's really good for like dirt pedal demos and stuff like that because it, it has um, the EQ on it has a really nice. Um, uh, where the mid sit is really nice and it, it just it, it can make dirt pedals uh sound really great for people that may uh, not be aware what is that is that like a 112 110 combo how many watts it is it's a 112 combo and i think it's like 15 watts el84 uh, uh 6v6 6v6 there you go yeah and just single channel single channel um yeah, and it's 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 a really it's a really nice amp for for clean stuff. I do um, you know when I kind of get into like time based effects and stuff like that, um, you know I will I'll typically go some Fendery route. Um, uh, I just did a I just did a demo of the new the new Pro Reverb reboot, the sixty eight oh, custom yeah. Pro Reverb. What a cool! Uh, I I had pretty low expectations, and it's a it's a really really. Why did um, you have pretty low expectations? Um, I just kind of had a sour taste in my mouth for any kind of reboot, anything, um, you know, especially in the, in the amp world. Um, and so I, I kind of expected to not like it and I uh, fell in love with it immediately. Like just, I want to use it for everything. Um, what's the difference? Uh, the difference between that and the original is it's, uh, they brought it down to, it's down to one single channel, so it doesn't have two channels anymore. Um, hmm. They use a. They added a mids control. They um, use a cream back speaker, which is really nice. Um, and then it, they built in. Then this is so. Like, when I hear stuff like this, I'm kind of like, eh. They somehow built in rectifier sag into the transformer. Okay. And so when I. What like does that, that do for like for anybody who's like, oh, what did the Hoda? What? Well, I think you know when when I think of a pro reverb, I think of just like endlessly clean, right? Okay. And, oh yeah. Um, and this amp gets dirty at like six. Huh. And so it's it, yeah, and it again like you have it, you hmm. have some opportunity with between the cream back and having a mids control. It's like you can actually pump some mids out of a fender amp like if you want to if you want to get the fender sound out of the the new pro reverb you have to scoop the mids like it's crazy huh um so it's it's a really it's a really nice amp um and then um you know if i'm not sure um i have a a 67 um baseman and it's just kind of like if if i'm not sure what route to go that that will cover anything it seems Cool. Do you always go analog with the uh, recording, or are you do you ever go direct into DAW? No, no. I I I mic uh, I mic everything, um, and and I I mean part of it part of it is I have to warrant. I, you know when we when we moved into this new house, I built this recording studio, so I have an amp room, <laughs> <laughs> and you know like and so I like to be able to show my spouse that I'm using it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but um, but I, uh, you know, I've been doing overdub studio stuff for like ad work um, and playing on people's records and stuff like that for a long time. So I do have a, I, I'm not going to say I'm like great at it, but I have a lot of experience with miking amps and cabs. Um, and um, I, I honestly in a spot where I'm, I think I could probably do that faster than figuring out how to use an IR loader or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, um, and you know, I, I, it is an amp room and it's in the other room, but I can still, you know, like it still moves the floor, you know, you don't really get that same kind of feeling, um, out of your, um, your, your monitor no, speakers. Like, that's you know, true. Um, so, I, and, and that at least makes it more real for me. Um, but, um, and I, you know, I like a challenge. Cool. So. I was wondering, would you consider doing a candlelight 
yeah demo yeah we, we should maybe <laughs> maybe Halloween. maybe with something like a liberace candelabra kind of yeah. thing yeah <laughs> It's going to be too bright. <laughs> too much bright. Way too bright. <laughs> Ryan, this has been a delight learning all about what you do and why you do it. And uh, we're grateful that you are doing it for whatever reason you do it. Uh, but uh, w- anything coming up in the future that might interest us? Yes. Well, uh, this is either going to, it's either going to be tremendous or terrible. There's no, I don't feel like there's any gray area in between there. Um, but I am starting a, a, a live series on YouTube and it's going to be different than kind of like, Hey, here's some lessons and stuff like that. What I'm actually doing is I am um, pulling in guests that I w- will be interviewing, um, for that. And so we're starting out with the two guitar players from Phantom Planet. Mm, cool. Um, it's gonna be cool. Wow. Um, we got um, we got Brian Fallon, um, for, and we're gonna do um, Chris Benson. We're gonna do the guys from mm-hmm. Scythe Guitars and stuff like that. And we're gonna do like a good mix of. Um, I think I'm gonna talk to David Torn here in a little bit too. I'm gonna try to pull him in, um, and you know it'll be a mix of you know manufacturers as well as you know people out there really using stuff too and just and i don't even know if it's going to be about gear i have no clue uh, i think it would have to be but you know i'm going to kind of leave it open and so i think it's exciting and terrifying all at the same time um but um I'm, it'll be different i'm looking forward to it that's that is cool and yet again another parallel uh in some case in some ways with uh, what i mentioned about dead mouse he's got uh, he's got this thing he's got this camera like perched way up towards the ceiling and he makes music and takes calls and talks to people while he's doing the thing and this is what I'm doing and everything. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? I I didn't. Crazy. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks so much, man. We This has been a ton of fun and uh, we've got a few more poundage of fun. Uh, actually, a few more than a few. There's a lot more than a few uh coming your way right now jared are you trying to say i'm fat no you're not fat yeah, man you're big boned no nah, i'm really <laughs> really fat no you're not ladies and gentlemen it's time you're, you're built like like iron giant man <laughs> like, <laughs> okay whoever that is all right it's time for our little game called would you rather this week's would you rather Comes to us from John Jackson. And honestly, he's got a ton of would you rathers here. But we're and just going to do one. We're going to do one, and I'm going to bank the we'll rest. Save the others for later. Yeah. But I just wanted to say, I read them all, and the last one was this one, and I loved it. Okay. So we're going to do this now. So you're walking down the street when two dodgy looking characters appear right in front of your face. Mm. Oh no, they're tone thieves. One grabs your clean sound, <laughs> and the other snatches your dirty tones. They run off in opposite directions. <laughs> Which tone-sucking troll do you chase first? Would you rather rescue your clean or your dirty tone? It's a great would you rather. I've never great. had anything like this. I feel it's like awesome. Finnegan is hiding behind the corner. I know. <laughs> so... I- you're dirty or clean, man. Which tone are you going to chase I, after? I, I'm dirty all day long, and the clean can actually just go live at that guy's house for a little while. <laughs> all right, Tony. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to keep go after my clean tone because I'm a clean tone kind. Yeah, of guy. you are. Yeah. I'm very clean. Yeah, Rob. I don't want to pick. It's it's can't be done. It depends on what the gig is. Classic. Like Rob. imagine. Well, yeah, I'm imagining my bands. I'm like, okay, this band, it would have to go clean. But then, like the band I'm gigging with this well, weekend, okay, pick one. It's good. Pick number two. Well, if it's got to be for like this week, it's have to be dirty. Okay, there that you go. I can you live without clean for the, that one. Yeah. Chase after that. Dementor. See how easy we can make your life. Uh-huh. I'm, <laughs> but but inside, I'm still <laughs> conflicted and horrible. Yeah, <laughs> they're. They're tone-sucking Dementors. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah. Jared, how about yourself? I'm chasing the dirty, man. I, I live on dirty. I like to play leads. I'm not a great lead player, but I still like to play them. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm chasing that dirty tone. All right. Yeah, I mean, just cover up the crap. That's, that's <laughs> exactly. <what I> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, yet again. Tony all by himself. Tony Tony's all by himself. <laughs> I'm going dirty. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> 
That's my that's my bones. Tony Baloney Island, baby. Yeah, it's all right. I'm used to it. I love it by myself. Well, John, <laughs> thank you for sending that awesome. Would you rather and many more that you'll hear from John. Uh, uh, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Wow. Yes, it is. Yes, he's great. Um, we've got a few people to thank, no. and then we're going to um, say bid adieu it's to you. our friend it's Ryan. And you, and you. Yes, and you. There's five of us. Get on with it, Sonny Boy. Hey, don't rush me. This is art. It's methodical art. Thank you. <laughs> At this point of the show, there's a special group of people that we like to thank. Mm-hmm. These would be our executive producers. That's right. We love we love our executive producers. Yeah. Now, someone out there, Rob might even be wondering, what is an executive producer? Rob? What? <laughs> Is an executive, an executive producer. producer. Is that what you were about to say? Is that I what knew it. It. He knew it. Go ahead. Tony. I knew you were going to. I'll finish your sentence. <laughs> well, it's very simple, folks. Go over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Check out a couple levels in which you can participate. Become a patron, a sponsor of yep. this very That's podcast. Right. Gotta do it. I'm slapping the table. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, each level comes with some really great thank you gifts. Things like T-shirts and barefoot buttons and keychains and stickers and picks and all sorts. All, all kinds all of stuff. All the good stuff. Yes. Big bags of swag. But as an executive producer, you get all that stuff. And, and there's one more thing. That's right. Jared? You get to have your name read on the thing. Your name read on the thing. That's what I'm going to do right now. Great. Are you sure it's okay to go now, Todd? I can wait a few minutes. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Todd gets mad at me sometimes. So special thanks to these executive producers, Mr. Tom Brazen. That's right. Martin Cliff, John Daly, Chris Kearney, Darren Gregory, Doug Christ, Michael Van Zant, Ken Sayers, Brian Robison, Michael Senchuk, Stefan Lamb, Johnny Knowles, Anthony Lathrop, John Anglin, Tyler Bray. Brad Partridge, Chris Heidel, John Esterley, Doug Gann, Justin Jones, Brett Alexander, James White, Matt Hart, Bill Gola Guitars, Richard Kendall, Tig Harmon, John Jackson, author of this week's Would You Rather, mm -hmm. mm. Jason Rausch, David Rando, Douglas King, Gary Cooper, Rob Saxby, Mark Garton, Elad Mazrahi, Mike D. And new this week, another executive producer. Today, actually. Today, shortly before this podcast commenced. Yes. Today. He must have known we were doing one. So special thanks to Trevor Gunderberg. Hey, All right. Welcome. Today. Thank you. Welcome aboard. You're in very, very good company. Uh -huh. right. But wait, Todd. Uh -huh. wait, wait, wait a second, because... There's another level of executive producer. Ooh, a little higher. A little higher. They live up in the penthouse suite. That's right. They have fezzes that they wear. There's pizza boxes <laughs> everywhere. It's, they each have their own jacuzzi, which is getting yes. to be a little bit of a problem. Well, and they're, they're one-person jacuzzis, believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, I know. It's, it's hard to believe. But, uh, you know, it's a little chlorine smelly up there, but that's okay. So we call these folks our grand poobas. That's mm -hmm. right. So, special thanks to these grand poobas, Jonathan Jerusik, Corey Nigro, David Kaminga, Science of Sound, Cody Foster, Sean S. Yes. Tommy Manasco, Adam Johnson, Steve Keys, Tim Nowak, Tyler Rines, James Pennington, LSJ Music Company, John Williams. Johnny Morales and Jack Caden. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again. Sorry for botching that, Jack. Hey, just let us know how we need to say that better. Uh, make Tony do it better. Um, hey, <laughs> I, I, honestly, thank you guys so much. It is such a humongous help to us. And we truly um, are, are, are so grateful. Thank you. Uh, Ryan... Thank Yo. you so much, man, for coming on the show. We had an absolute blast talking with you. Yes, and sir. We we I know that the rest of the listeners are shaking their heads with us too. Yes, man. I, I appreciate I appreciate people wanting to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you found uh, a handful of blokes that like to do that. So yes, it's been a good pairing. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go check out. Uh, where can they find you, Ryan? Uh, Demos in the Dark on YouTube or on Instagram, but I prefer YouTube. All righty. And Tonya? Yes. You go to TonyaBologna.com. <laughs> no, go to PinkGuardianGot.com. Check out some of the custom pick guards I have available. Some stuff is available for online ordering. Most of what I do is custom work, so shoot me an email, let me know what you need, and I will take very good care of you. Yep. Jared? If you want to get a hold of me, just go through the uh, Facebook app, through the Guitar Knobs. Yeah, or just send me a little note Yeah. in the meantime. Yeah. Rob, how about yourself? MadCowAmplification.com or Instagram. It's probably where I'm most active now. That is one of the best get get, like best gear instagram things out there check honestly you will love it uh rob knows so much about amps i learn something every time and you can send me an email todd at the guitar knobs.com or dm me on instagram at guitar knobs we'd love to hear what you have to say uh what your thoughts are anything you'd like to share heck we just want to hear from you you can just wave to us too uh thank you all so very much have a fantastic guitar week and subscribe yeah. bye jared bye what's the word you know the when it folds in on itself hey give me all one right. give, can i have one the movie serendipity. Oh, yes. serendipity no 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 yeah but they cuddle like nothing else man yeah yeah that's uh, great. among Martin, other things know. they fart terribly oh that's oh, a great the, movie the, the butterfly effect no that's a different movie <laughs> <laughs> Jared, How about you give me a little wait, bit. Wait, wait, wait. Bridge, bridge over River Kwai. No, I'm, yeah. I'm the king of the world. Go to I'm hunting. The, with the, Titanic. Titanic. No, the, who's in that? The guy. That's because Todd doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, it's possible. Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Yo, we need I to figure this out before we start, or else we're going to go nuts. nuts. It's the, with, with, he, the movie where it's the, the city's folding in on itself. He's just punching a bunch of little digital buttons. Push that buttons button. This button will work. You guys aren't... Re- are you recording right now? Give me a little bit of that. The Wolf it's of Wall bas- Street. It's Basketball Diaries. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll cover, cover it up. up. Uh, crap. I can't remember. It's like Enigma, or it's like something like that. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> are you in the dark? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have the lights on. It, uh, it's yeah, a, and I, I, li- I literally just watched it a couple weeks ago. Self here. Sometimes it helps if you're prepared, Todd. There we go. Because it, it's, it's, it's a cultural lexicon now. When something gets really complicated, right. you're like, oh, that's yeah. a real blank. Inception. Costanza. Yes, Inception. Inception. Yes. I listen to Gordon Lightfoot when I mow the lawn. Oh, I just watched that. No, I didn't see it. I have no idea what um, you're talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> good remember this. Jared? How about you come over here? And give me no, a that's weird. That. No, that's that's really weird. <laughs> now, don't. You just... That was a good movie. <laughs> well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram, at Guitar Knobs. Catch you next time.